Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And today we are taking a look at the brand new 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro that Apple announced in a press release earlier this week. Now we finally have our hands on it. So without further ado, I'm pretty excited to actually test this thing out. So let's go ahead and unbox it. Okay, and here we have the box for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Of course, on the front, you can see that big expansive 16 inch screen. You can get a glimpse of that new magic keyboard. But other than that, it looks pretty similar to last year's design. Design. So let's go ahead and open up this MacBook Pro. So Apple makes it easy and gives us a nice little pull tab here. Now this is the higher end base model. So one terabyte of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that AMD Radeon 5500 with four gigabytes of video memory. And of course that Intel 2.3 gigahertz eight core processor. So let's go ahead and lift up the box. And there you have it right there, that big 16 inch MacBook Pro. Let's lift this up and see what else we get inside of the box. Of course, you get a USB-C to USB-C cable. You get some documentation here, which is actually going to come with color matching Apple stickers. So this is the space gray version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So we get space gray Apple stickers. Of course, we also have our USB-C power adapter. This one gets an increase from the 15 inch MacBook Pro. So this one is now a 96 watt USB-C power adapter. All right, let's get rid of all the boring stuff and let's bring our attention back to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is now wrapped nicely in plastic. Let's go ahead and remove that. So let's compare the size to a 15 inch MacBook Pro because I think it is a little bit bigger on the 16 inch, it's kind of hard to line these up, but you can kind of see that the 16 inch does stick out a little more and it is a little bit taller. So not a huge change in the size, but it is a little bit bigger than that older 15 inch version if you were looking for something that's more portable. I can also feel the slight weight difference on the 16 inch model. Now this is a little bit heavier than that 15 inch. This is gonna be 4.3 pounds, where the 15 inch came in at four pounds. And the 16 inch version is ever so slightly thicker, which should actually help with thermal. So that actually might be a good thing. And like the 15 inch, of course, you still just get four USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. Okay, so let's open this up. And you can see we're getting a preview of that new keyboard, which is very similar to a Magic Keyboard. And as I'm typing on it already, I can already tell the difference. This definitely has more travel and I think a lot of people are going to like that. I personally like the butterfly keyboard, but a lot of people did not like the butterfly keyboard. So if you're not a fan of the butterfly keyboard, this MacBook Pro should make you a lot more happy. Okay, let me set this up and then I will come back with my initial impressions. Okay, so I went ahead and set up the MacBook Pro. I have been using it overnight and running some benchmarks and I have some first impressions that I wanna share with you. Okay, before we get into those benchmarks, I wanna talk about two important features that I think a lot of people are interested in with this 16 inch MacBook Pro. The first, of course, would be the display size. Now, this is a bigger display than last year's 15 inch MacBook Pro, which actually came in at 15.4 inches. So realistically, on this 16 inch MacBook Pro, you're only getting about half an inch bigger on the diagonal in screen size. Now, even just half an inch in terms of display can actually be quite noticeable. And I would say that when I first opened up the 16 inch MacBook Pro, as soon as I started using it, I could notice that the display was slightly larger. How that's actually going to affect my real world usage when I'm using this machine, I really don't have a solid or concrete opinion on yet. I definitely need to use the 16 inch MacBook Pro for a longer period of time before I give an opinion on that display. But as far as first impressions go, I am definitely pleased with the bigger display size and the display is as great as always. So you're getting that classic Apple calibrated LCD display with 500 nits of brightness and a P3 wide color spectrum and also the addition of the True Tone display. The second design change where I think people are going to be more interested is that this 16 inch MacBook Pro has a new keyboard inside of it. Ever since the 2016 MacBook Pro, Apple has put in what they call a butterfly keyboard into those laptops and those keyboards were controversial for two reasons. The first being is that they had pretty low travel so not everyone liked typing on them. I personally like typing on them, but the bigger controversy was that they looked like they probably had high failure rates. A lot of people complained about stuck or repeating keys. And while I personally have never had an issue with any of my butterfly keyboards, 
there have been plenty of people online documenting that their keyboard either got stuck or whenever they hit a key, it would repeat the letter. So Apple is getting rid of the butterfly keyboard and they are adding what they call a magic keyboard, which is a pretty similar term because that is the same term they use for their desktop line of keyboards that you would get when you purchase an iMac or you could purchase them separately. So this magic keyboard is different because it uses an older traditional scissor switch mechanism. And the scissor switch mechanism is tried and true. So in theory, this new version of the MacBook Pro keyboard really shouldn't be prone to the errors that the butterfly keyboard had. And Apple said they incorporated some other changes as well to make it a better typing experience. In terms of overall typing experience, it does feel very similar to the desktop Magic Keyboard with that increased one millimeter of key travel. Overall, the keyboard really does feel like a hybrid between the butterfly keyboard and the old mushier keyboard of the MacBook Pro. So it has increased travel, but overall the keys are still pretty stable. The 16 inch MacBook Pro still comes equipped with the touch bar, but you'll notice there's a few changes here as well. So number one, it now has a dedicated touch ID button. You can see that it is separated from the touch bar. And the other change is that it now has a physical escape key. Overall, so far, I am liking the typing experience on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Okay, so what about performance? Because Apple is promising better thermal management inside of this new MacBook Pro. Well, to start off, let's run everyone's favorite standard benchmark, which is Geekbench 5. You can see we're getting a single core score of 834 and a multi-core score of 6,623. Now those benchmarks give us a rough estimate of how this MacBook Pro will perform, but let's open up a more intensive CPU benchmark, Cinebench R20. As we run Cinebench R20, we're also going to be opening the Intel Power Gadget to see how fast these CPUs are performing. So as we run Cinebench R20, we can see a couple of different things going on. Number one, this MacBook Pro runs just as hot as the previous generations. Even though it has better thermal management, it is still getting very, very hot at up to 97 degrees Celsius. However, we are seeing better turbo speeds on the 16 inch MacBook Pro using the same processor as the 2019 15 inch with the 16 inch keeping the clock speeds around 3.20 to 3.10. And if we go look at our old 15 inch results, we can see that that same CPU was running at a lower 2.78 frequency. As we finish the Cinebench benchmark, we get an overall score of 3,208. So as you can see from that benchmark, Apple's claims of better thermal management are true. It is still running hot, but it is utilizing better turbo clock speeds than the previous 15 inch version. So this is going to be a better performing machine, even though they're both using the same Intel CPUs. Now a bigger change this year to the 16 inch MacBook Pro is the addition of new graphics cards. So the one I'm using is the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of video memory. To test this out, I'm running the Heaven benchmark. For the first test, I am running it on medium settings. At the end of the benchmark, we get an overall score of 2,378 with a frames per second of 94.4. Next, I decided to run this benchmark on the ultra settings, and I'm comparing it directly to the 2019 15 inch version. And we are getting much better graphics performance out of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. For the same higher end base configuration as last year, we are seeing the 15 inch MacBook Pro get a score of 551 with an overall FPS of 21.9 using the Radeon Pro 560X. The 16 inch MacBook Pro gets more than double the score using that same high-end base configuration with an overall score of 1,343 and an FPS of 53.3. And you can get a higher end graphics card on the 16 inch MacBook Pro for $100 more and that will come with eight gigabytes of video memory. I'm still waiting for my unit to come in and that should take about a week. So in terms of just benchmarks, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is already outperforming the 15 inch version even with the same CPUs and we are seeing much better performance in the overall graphics. Now benchmarks are just benchmarks. Now I really wanna use this laptop in real world usage, so I definitely have to do some video editing on it, some photo editing, and definitely get a few rounds of StarCraft in to see how this machine performs overall in a real world scenario. All right, before we wrap up this video, I wanted to go over two other first impressions I had with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The first one is the speakers on this laptop. Now, I've been playing around with it, I've been listening to music, I've been watching episodes of the morning show, and the speakers on this 16 inch MacBook Pro are super, super impressive. These are the best laptop speakers that I have ever heard. 
They are noticeably better than the old 15 inch version and they have really good bass and they are really rich and clear. They are very, very good sounding speakers. The second thing I wanted to mention is Apple's new microphones. Now, Apple is promising studio quality microphones inside of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I tested these microphones out and I'm going to play you an audio clip directly from those microphones right now. Hello world and welcome to another episode of GadgetCast. I'm your host, Gregory McFadden, joined by my co-host, Travis MCP. Now, I was pretty impressed with that sound quality coming from the inbuilt microphones on a laptop. For internal laptop microphones, they sound really good, and I think you could definitely use these in a pinch if you're recording a podcast on the go, or even if you just needed to record some other audio samples and you forgot your main microphone, these 16-inch MacBook Pro microphones are Good, I think I might use them for a few of my own projects. All right, everyone, and that was just my unboxing and first impressions of the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this laptop so far? Let me know if you have any questions that I could answer in a future video. As always, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from this channel, including a future review of this 16-inch MacBook Pro, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna support the channel out in any way, like maybe purchasing a 16-inch MacBook Pro through my affiliate link, I will leave that all in the description. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.